Let's go. This time, instead of driving to Texas to visit Marshall, I headed to the airport in the early morning to catch a flight. Immediately upon arrival, we wasted no time hopping around the antique stores, finding little treasures that I made sure to save room for in my bags, and will probably make an appearance in later videos. And exploring new restaurants with tasty food. And of course, I drug Marshall to a pole class. Marshall, we're taking a pole class together. It's my first time. It's gonna be fun. Despite the AC being out in the hot, humid summer of Texas, the instructor Mel led a fantastic class that we both enjoyed. Then, of course, we had to play catch up, do some show and tell, and exchange some gifts. Here's one of the many gifts that I made and brought to Marshall that he hung above his ancestor altar. And finally, we sat down to craft for a day, working in our grimoires and chatting about the importance of the craft in witchcraft. You can either watch this video or you can set it up for more of a podcast style listening. Either way, I hope that you gain a few little interesting tips and tricks and tidbits throughout our crafting chat. Enjoy. Grimoires is what we're working on right now in a way. Yes. We've been doing some repurposed books. Um, it's been really fun. I like to, I like to collage. You can see there's a huge mess going on here. And it's been really fun because what we can do is we can kind of like pick up a book and, and, recreate something that is personal to ourselves. We can create it as aesthetically pleasing as we want. Mm -hmm. We can put as much effort or as little effort as we want into it. You end up having just um, something that's extremely personal to you. And for me, so when I created this book, this is my more recent one, it's really fat because it was smaller <laughs> and then just got bigger and fatter and fatter. But I designed this as my personal book of rights. Mm -hmm. um, I don't call it Book of Shadows, or I might call it my grimoire, but it, I really call it my personal book of rights because I was designing a system that was meant for me. Yeah. And it's meant to be something that is... I mean, this is everything in your personal practice. In of, my personal and practice. And it's, it's really great. I am so blessed that I get to be somebody who gets to like look through this and uh, you know get get all of the... All of the interesting details and meanings behind so many of the so many of the things that you put in here, like I, I'm watching your practice grow. Like you're creating a full system, which I think is really is is just awesome. It's so cool. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's been really cool. So I, you know, I I've talked about in the past that I'm really interested in the concept that comes out of traditional witchcraft, mm -hmm. uh, Book of Cornish Ways by Gemma Gary, the concept of these four familiar spirits. Now, the thing is, is in the book, it's actually quite vague. It's a little bit of information. It's about using these, these archetypal spirits and, and their virtues that they have and the directions they come from and the direction of a compass style working. Mm -hmm. But after that, it's really how deep you want to dive into it. Yeah. And that's what I did. I dove deep into it and I started building like a relationship with these archetypal spirits. I even built specific prayers and invocations to work with them. If I want to work with the toad on an emotional way, if I wanted to work with um, uh, the snake if I for uh, defense or potency, um, it was a way to kind of build a system that made sense, a praxis. And I didn't understand that word for so long. It's literally a mixture of like a, a practice, but also a belief system mm -hmm. because I think many of us have a practice, but we don't have any system of belief behind it. And if that's the case, that's okay. Right. But sometimes for me, I find that I, things tend to work more if I understand a little bit more how they work. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> so like one of the things that I love is I live in Texas. I'm not near any major places where like say, cemetery coffin nails are being created and many times when you're buying coffin nails or getting coffin nails now they're not actually coffin nails no. and you're buying them from a store mm -hmm. and a lot of times these, these 
we're kind of feeding a lot into capitalism, which is fine sometimes. <laughs> right. I mean, we're, what else can you do when right. you're I mean, living in a capitalist society? So, but one of the things I like to do is, is I like to really work with my land and I like to think, okay, what, what was a, 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 a coffin nail or a train track nail made for it, it? It was old. It was rusty. There was usually like iron involved. There's a lot of, of, of egregoric spirit in it. And for me, I thought of crossroads nails. Like every single time you go out to a, uh, a, a four-way crossroads, there's always these big like electronic posts, phone poles. And if you ever go and check, if you look closely, there's tons of nails in them. People put up um, uh, wanted signs. They put up garage sales. They put up uh, missing pets. They met missing people. Uh, all sorts of things. And they never come back and get their nails. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden you have created a type of, of liminal place totem that I can go and collect at any time. Yeah. I have literally, I live at a crossroads. I can go to any four way yeah. block. I can bring my hammer. I can Just... pull out a few nails, especially if you're, like I said, building a practice, don't just go and pull out a few nails. Do it at a special time. Yeah. Crossroads nails have a lot of, time. in a liminal time. I like to go either, if I'm pulling these nails for possible baneful work, I like to go um, up the day of the dark moon mm -hmm. at a liminal time like sunset. I would say midnight, but I usually can't make it up that way. Yeah. <laughs> Both of us are like not people who stay up super right? late. We're, but it, I think what, it was like 9.30? Last, last night, night. Yeah, and I was like, all right, I'm going to bed, and he was like, me too, me too. and mm -hmm. living the crazy witch life, what can I say? You know what, if you don't have access to coffin nails, but that's something you're doing, just take the item, and instead of nailing with a coffin nail, go to bury it in the graveyard. Yeah, and just let it, let it sit and marinate for a little bit, you know, <laughs> then, then you've got a coffin nail, but um, I do like that you are repurposing things much like I do, like both of us are very crafty witches. Yeah. And these are repurposed books. So Marsha found these at, you said like a craft fair or like a market? It's like a farmer's market here oh. in the town I live in. And this woman, she she had all, she had a stall with all of these books that she repurposed into like junk journals. Mm -hmm. And I loved them so much, I ended up buying several of them and I saved one for you and I got one for myself and, and I've just been really loving the concept of building something out of mm -hmm. something that's already been built versus looking a lot of us when we get these beautiful clean pristine journals we're afraid to put a single mark in them yeah, because they're so pretty you they're don't so want to mess pretty. them up yeah and these you know it, it's tape it's they're collage junk journals. They're, they're meant junk to journals. be yeah well that's funny because like my 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 personal full grimoire they've always been junk journals they haven't really been like just you know, like bullet journals or whatever that I just kind of write in. It's always things that are like pasted. And um, I've always, uh, even with my sketchbook, like I'll paste little things in it from my travels. If I get like tickets from like a place that I go to or like a business card or whatever, I like to just glue them in. Um, and that's kind of always been a, a thing. I actually made Marshall, well, I made this one originally and I, I was like, Marshall needs it. So I brought it for him and then he's already made it like this gorgeous, gorgeous pages already and like added some gold embellishments with, uh, it's a glue gun, right? Like yeah, glue. it literally is just like sealing wax glue. Oh. You can put it in, um, you buy it online. I just put it in a glue gun and bam. Perfect. Yeah. And so I, tidbit, I follow Nick the booksmith. I use a lot of her ideas and, you know. We've been watching the background while, while crafting Yeah, all day. she's great. And so, like, she gives a lot of really good information. But also, like, that's the point is you're just using these little scraps that you maybe bought, but you can also just accumulate. Um, and maybe an old journal or an old book that maybe you don't care about what's in there. So you can paste things onto the page or cut the cut the pages out and add your own or, you know, paint over the, over the cover and just really make this thing that you that isn't special to you, something that's incredibly special to you. So uh, this healing wheel is one that I made. Um, I made it a while ago. I let it sit for two full moons and I, I basically used several different things that can be all used literally in healing magic. They all have literal healing properties and I'm not talking magical. I mean medicinal. 
So I have like lemon balm, feverfew, mugwort, yarrow. And then because I want this to be a topical type of oil you can use on bruises, on, on um, sore muscles, possibly cuts that have already healed over and you wanna make sure that you're continuing to, to keep it from scarring and whatnot. If it has pain, I even put uh, fresh datura leaves and seeds in there and then a cup of carrier oil. I went through the process of marinating it basically in a jar for two months. I could have done one, but I really wanted it to be very strong. Mm -hmm. So I went ahead and did two. And then on the second full moon, I strained it all out into a jar and got this really green, I mean, Ooh. deep green. Kobe Michael wrote The Poison Path Herbal, and it's a beautiful book. I absolutely love it. It's a full okay. system of practice, but there are some of really interesting recipes in there. And one of them that I wanted to write down and kind of adapt slightly to my practice um, was the ink of the green devil. And it's such an easy recipe. Mm -hmm. Anyone can make it. In fact, I chose the plants that went in there. But what he actually suggests, funny enough, is literally just... Um, it's just fresh plant material. Fresh plant material. So this is where it gets versatile. The recipe itself is ink of the green devil. Mm -hmm. And it's to create surprise ink. Um, but it's... <laughs> what? What? Uh, <laughs> but you're using fresh plant material. So what does that mean to you? That's the great part of the craft or of your practice is that you can make whatever you want out of this. This ink can be baneful or to bless or to charm or to glamour or really anything. And especially if you work with a very specific plant, like you can use that. That's what we were talking about is you can use it for so many different things, but like it's that creativity that you really want to like hone in on and think about how you can use this in more ways than just maybe like writing stuff. Exactly. And, and I put down specific things from my garden that I want to use, but I want you to think about many of the ways in which we write things down, right? We write things down that are sigils. We draw, we draw glyphs, we write petitions, we write in our book, we write spells, we write recipes. We use the written word a lot. Um, one of the ways in which we could completely dive deeper into that is using inks. And because the recipe only calls for fresh plant material, you get to decide what, what you want this means. ink to be for. Yeah, you can dye things. And it, I said, I think it says in the book you could dye bones, which yes, right up my alley, but also Completely. paper, or you could dye textiles. Mm -hmm. So if you work with textile magic, like, or yarn, you know, like you can dye all of these things and turn it into not magic. Or like, there's so many things that you can just add layers upon layers upon layers. Mm -hmm. And then that goes also into going from beginner into more intermediate and advanced work of it's really just layering things on and understanding how to use this um, simple, simple things into more advanced and intermediate. Well, like imagine if you um, wanted to do some sort of like self-love work or draw in a relationship to you and you were going to write a petition on the day of Venus mm -hmm. to do so. One of the things that you could do is to, to take it a little bit more personal, to get a little bit more crafty, to work with some of these plant spirits is you could take a bunch of rose petals, mm -hmm. put them in a double boiler with some vodka, really kind of macerate it down, mm -hmm. let it really uh, absorb all, uh, probably about four hours of, of, of really kind of just keeping it warm and not boiling because it's in a double boiler. Right. And then strain out, add some gum arabic when it's still hot, makes it a little thicker. Now you've literally got a love ink out of rose petals. Yeah, and I mean, again, if you want to take it that extra mile from beginner to intermediate to advanced, is you can use a very specific bush from a specific place, mm -hmm. or maybe you grew it with the intention of creating love magic with it. Um, I mean, I know that Gabby Herstick uses roses in her sex magic all the time. So it's like maybe using one of the roses that you used in one of your sexual rituals mm -hmm. into this ink. And then, you know, like that adds all of the layers. Well, witchcraft is about layers. It's, we put layers yeah. of protection around us. We put wards up. We wear layers of, of magical jewelry. We, we put layers in spells because the more layers you create, the more direction the magic has mm -hmm. to go, right? Mm -hmm. If it's super simple with more just specific. one layer, it's very general outcome. The more specific, the more narrow, the more layers you put in, the more specific the outcome. Yeah, which there's nothing wrong with simple spells. I love no. simple spells, yeah. uh, but you might get that's a simple outcome. exactly you might get a simple outcome. You know what? That's my answer now. Is when when people ask me the difference between, like, a beginner 
practitioner and an advanced practitioner, it's creativity and adaptability-ness. Adaptability-ness? Adapti- adaptable-ness. Adaptability. Adaptability. <laughs> <laughs> Take anything from a book, right? Mm-hmm. Like how you literally just did. If you took this three ingredient simple thing from a book that somebody might be like, oh, okay, I'm going to write something with that. And you applied it with the plants that you work with, that you know well, that you know how they work with your magic. And then, I mean, I even see that you've added a couple of extra steps in there. That are more personal to my practice. Yeah. I already said that I like to work with these four familiar archetypes. Mm -hmm. I know if I'm working with an ink that is made from plant spirits, I'm working with a familiar hair, which is uh, the southern familiar closing, uh, surrounding with the virtues of earth, Mm -hmm. plant spirits, Mm -hmm. um, uh, flora and fauna. So I know I might bless this ink with the power of the southern hair because that's how I would kind of work it within my own practice. I have a really fun charm here that I wanted to share with you guys and it's a charm bag for luck. I created this based off of several things, but most of them are are based off of what I can get my hands on very easily. Mm -hmm. The first thing that goes, that we have is a red charm bag. Red is a magical color in history. Um, We don't need to go into a bunch of billions of colors to use color magic. I mostly use black, white, and red, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So like the first ingredient to go in this charm bag for luck is a chicken wishbone. I didn't have a chicken wishbone, just a wishbone. Yeah. The name name itself gives you the connotation. Many people are like, I don't have a herb, what should I use? And the thing I want you to think about when we're talking about substitutions, if that's even a possibility, is what's the connotation? What's the purpose? Mm -hmm. You're going to replace it most likely with something that, that still fits within that connotation. So first off, I think of a wishbone because ever since I was younger, the co- the idea of breaking the wishbone at a specific uh, familial event mm-hmm. was always a superstition we had. So the wishbone itself gets to hold the wish that I want to bring luck towards me. First thing in the bag. Second thing I do is three clovers. It have to necessarily be a four leaf clover. If you find one, fantastic. Even luckier. Even luckier. But clovers themselves are are a weed that grows everywhere. Yeah, you, you find can find them, them anywhere. <laughs> anywhere. So all you have to do is step outside and get them. Mm-hmm. And I think this is where you can add an extra layer. You could also step outside at dawn, another liminal mm, time. That's true. When the dew is still fresh. And that's that's very well known for having a lot of luck and glamour um, associations. It's an association with the sunrise. Here you are, liminal time, the sun is rising, every possibility is ahead of you for the next 24 hours. True. So start thinking again about how you're gonna build layers into your spellcraft. Next thing, I have three dandelion heads. Again, we have- Dandelions are everywhere. And they're very adaptable. Mm -hmm. Dandelions are part of the mercurial clan of plant spirits. Mm -hmm. They're associated with um, easy maneuvering adaptability and of course wishes you blow them for a wish yeah good luck uh we also have three star anise star anise has a lot of um opportunity opening psychic opening magical punch and if you've noticed i've done three of each of these Mm -hmm. because three is a magical number layers um i also have cinnamon uh to bring it quick Oh yeah. Speed. We want this now. <laughs> I want this now and I want it with a punch. And lastly, allspice. Allspice also has a long connotation with luck. Um, I even have the really cute like wooden kitchen witchery board that I got. From oh yeah, I do love it. And one of the things under luck it says is allspice. So it allows you to know when you're seasoning your food, how you might use a little kitchen witchery. Oh, that's awesome. Kitchen. Yeah, the, um, the dandelion heads I like too because it's like you can use them kind of in different stages mm-hmm. depending on what the luck charm is for absolutely like i like i feel like the luck charm for success maybe for i would use like the flower but if i wanted i don't know luck in meeting new people or mm-hmm. like networking i would use the dandelion head where you can blow and it, it goes out to all right. these different you know like <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> and so charm bags are really fun because i feel like they're extremely versatile yes you can do a lot with them mm-hmm. but once you have taken each item and place them in, what do you do to finish it? I like to actually say a little incantation directly into the bag so it understands my intention Mm -hmm. and then lock it in place by by doing it tight. So after placing all of these in there, I'll speak directly into the bag by wishing bone and dandelion thrice, cinnamon, star anise, clover, all spice. Bring me luck, send good fortune my way. Spirits from within, hear the words that I say and tighten. 
I love that. I actually used this Luck Charm bag and it worked swimmingly. So. Did you really? Yeah, I did. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Except I didn't have a lot of the things that you had on hand. So instead of a chicken wishbone, I used a rabbit's foot that I had. Um, yeah. Lucky rabbit's foot. Exactly. That's the connotation. Yeah, I was like, that's what I had. Um, that's probably one of the best substitutes I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, because that's, I mean, from all my roadkill collecting, like, that's what I had on hand. It was yeah. all these rabbit's feet. I was like, well, well, I don't have a witch, or I don't have a, a wishbone, so I used that. And there was, like, a couple of other things that I didn't have on hand, but... Again, like I, I used what I had at the time because I literally was like, I have 15 minutes to make this. Let's right. go, exactly. and that's what I did. I, I got it to the person that needed, and it happened. It worked pretty well, so can't be mad about that. That's great. Yeah. So I also want to talk about the song of the cicada. Okay. Oh yes. So yes. this was this was a fun one. I wrote this myself. It's it's. It's a really special charm for me because it really works with my land. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that I think a lot of people miss on is, oh, what kind of witch are you? Oh, I'm a such and such witch, or I'm a traditional witch, or I'm a, I'm a folk practitioner. And, I'm, and sometimes I don't even know, I don't always know what to say when people ask me that. So a lot of times I will say, you know, I'm a traditional witch, I work with the spirits of my land. Mm -hmm. And as a Southern person, especially during the summertime, we are inundated by cicadas. Yes. You heard it. I, I mean, did. In fact, in the morning right now, because it's, it's mid to late August, we have the crickets in the afternoon, we have the cicadas because mm -hmm. the season's shifting. But one of the things that's really amazing about working with the spirits of your land is as an animist, everything is spirited. Mm -hmm. So the cicadas aren't just bugs that live here. They're the music of my land. They create literal vibrational sounds that echo off of our trees, off of each other. That's how they speak to each other. Mm -hmm. That's how they mate. They are a, a egregore of my, of my landscape that I listen to and they're always there. Even when I don't hear them, I, I know they're hibernating mm -hmm. and they're coming back. They're a very transformative type of, of insect, which I think is really cool. Well, I ended up writing a, a little bit of a narrative. And mm -hmm. I think this is cool because a lot of people who are unsure about how to get into spellcraft, narrative spellcrafting is something that's not spoken about very much. Mm -hmm. And it's the idea that a story is teaching you a spell. A poem is teaching you the spell. Mm -hmm. So the way that I kind of wrote this was this idea that you would take um, a, a found fallen cicada, mm -hmm. and eventually you're gonna find one no matter where you go, right. and then you'll take a, a piece of parchment or paper, maybe with a little bit of the dye you just made, Layers. Right. <laughs> then you write a petition on there, wrap it around the uh, cicada as a burial garb, go outside, find the loudest cicada you can hear, and bury it at that tree. Hmm. Because now you're putting that same cicada, which crawled out of the earth, to transform from this grub to a flying insect, mm -hmm. to bring out the song of our land, and, and kind of share that petition amongst all the others so it continues to vibrate off of the sounds they make. Yeah. So this idea was that I can work with the music of my landscape by petitioning the spirit of that of that music. So I'll, I'll give it a burial and then I will then turn around and actually say the poem that I made. I won't say the whole thing, right. but I'll give you a few lines. Yes, please. So, song of the deafening cicada, sing to me of your southern wilds. Song of the carcophonous cicada, Sing to me of your earthly trials. From the ground do you crawl, from grub to winged beast, from larva beneath the darkened earth to treetops to make your musical feast. From tree to tree and shrub to bush, winged creature, strike your chords. Liminal being of above and below, sing the aria of the Crossroadian lords. And I think one of the things that we always ask ourselves is, what am I supposed to offer the spirits? What do I give an yes, offering? Yes, that's, that's a big question for sure. Song is a wonderful offering. Mm -hmm. Devotion to time. these spirits. Time. When I wrote this, I was making a devotional to the music of my landscape. And they hear that, mm -hmm. like the same way that I hear them. So if I were to give a funeral rite to a fallen cicada that is the makeup of the music of my landscape, it would kind of be a bit of a trade. I'm asking for this this boon, and I'm giving you back one of your own with mm -hmm. a with a special a special song. Yeah, and, and I think that's something that's really underutilized in witchcraft. Yes, it is. Well, and and it, like I think it, again, it's just it's simple. You it's know? so it's, simple. I think one of the fun things is um, I sometimes will do a page in my book, mm -hmm. 
and I'm totally on board with it. I love the recipe. Yes. And I'm putting it together in real life at the same time that I'm writing it down. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I realize, oh crap, the way that I wrote it isn't working exactly the way I want. Mm -hmm. This is a junk journal. That's yes. the beauty of it. I love junk journaling. You just journaling. get to create more fold outs to do little, hey, you know what? I did it on just this date it and it was better to do it this way. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Yeah. It all ends up coming together. Well, and I mean, I, I do think eventually it's been something I want to do for a long time is make, uh, like a series on making grimoires. Oh yeah. Cause I, I'm not going to show my personal grimoire. Sorry guys. I know a lot of people want me to, but I'm just not gonna. Smaller ones are almost a lot of the time my favorites because eventually once you do get to that point where you're like, oh, I'm just going to whatever, like it's just a junk journal. I'm going to throw whatever I have at it. That like freedom almost makes it more beautiful more aesthetic if that's really what you're looking for because like you don't you're not worried about making mistakes and that's the whole point and so i end up liking like my smaller grimoires that are me figuring things out anyway because of all the little fold outs and all the little envelopes and all the little pieces that i accidentally ripped out and taped back in and you know like oh, it just the like tape. the tape the tape <laughs> the tape and the glue and then sewing them back in and the little paper clips and everything it's just mm -hmm. so good or taking like your your grimoire and your spells like too seriously, I think is a little, or not seriously, I guess taking, um, putting yourself in a box of not allowing any wiggle room of like, no, I need this specific ingredient or it's not gonna work. But you actually said something earlier about that where- Yes, okay. Yeah. I do think in general- Yeah. A lot of things can be substituted. I think what gets lost in translation is that not everything is meant to have a substitute because a lot of sometimes the items we're getting it's not about the item it's the journey to acquire it mm -hmm. so if someone says go out to the crossroads get a crossroads nails a crossroads nail under the dark moon at sunset mm -hmm. there's no substitute no <laughs> there isn't no. because the journey of going out and doing it the commitment to to timing when the sun was going to set to walking out there I mean, I walked out there with like a hammer and a bag and a skirt, and I was like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> don't give a shit. I'm and, getting this fucking nail. I mean, these nails, and people were driving by, like, what is this guy doing? Is I'm like yanking old rusty nails out of this, out of this post. But mm -hmm. you have to understand, the act of doing so mm -hmm. is magic. Yes. Well, and again, like, it it kind of really makes you put in perspective of like, how much do you want this, or like, how important. Mm -hmm is this spell or is the outcome of this spell to you? And maybe it's like, ooh, going to the crossroads or going to the cemetery and laying on a grave and meditate. You know, like there's, I mean, there's a rite like that um, where you go to at midnight and you lay on a grave and like connect with that spirit. And it's like, some people would be like, I'm not doing that, but there is. And that's okay. And that's okay. That's not for you. No. Yeah. That spell is just maybe not worth it. And at the end of the day, like, it, it really puts into perspective of like, okay, well, are you really needing this spell to happen? Or are you just wanting some like quick fix to whatever you're experiencing or doing or needing or wanting? And to be perfectly honest, either way is okay. Yeah. If, if that spell isn't for you, I get asked a lot of questions online a lot about, um, I don't have this ingredient, what should I do? Mm -hmm. And sometimes there is no substitute because again, it's the journey of, of acquiring it that is the right. magical act. That just means that the spell isn't for you. But look at what we've been talking about this entire time. Mm -hmm. We have an opportunity to build spells out of our own experience. So if that spell isn't for you, you have the information at your fingertips to create a spell that would be. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, and I think that's why, like, I love spell books, but I also really don't use them. Mm -hmm. um, I use them more as like structures of ideas of like, oh, okay. So they're doing a charm bag, but they've also enchanted like the string that goes around it. Well, maybe that was a spell for calling in love, but it's like, that's not what I need, but I can use that idea of enchanting the string around mm -hmm. it. So it's like, it's more of using that of how I use spell books rather than like gathering all the ingredients to par of exactly what they're asking and like exactly the color of this charm bag. And then like putting together their spell, I want to create a spell that I know and I can feel working as I'm making it rather than something that I'm like, is this how it's supposed to feel? Right. I don't know. Like, you know, like I never use yellow for this. Like, I don't know, <laughs> something like that. Well, you know, I think one of the biggest things as, as a witch mm -hmm. is a witch is cunning. 
Yes. You have to be cunning. And when I say being cunning, I mean we have to be using all of our smarts, all of our all of our, the things that are our fingertips. So for me, I need a spell that requires to weave a braid of red thread under the full moon. It's literally a week before the dark moon, and I cannot wait till then. I have options. I I pre-plan a lot of these things, but if I haven't, maybe I have some moon water. And yeah. yes, I use moon water. I'm this many years, and I still use moon water. Yeah. I think it's totally, it's totally usable. Take that thread, soak it in full moon water, mm -hmm. then braid it at a liminal time. That is a substitution. And I think a lot of people who are waiting for a certain time but it's not gonna fit within their schedule, wouldn't necessarily take the next steps to ask, okay, so what can I do? Yeah. I have full moon water that I made last full moon. I use it for my plants. I didn't know what else to do. I saw it on TikTok. What should I do with it? You can use it in substitute mm -hmm. of the full moon. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Right. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I, I, I agree with that. It's just kind of like, there are so many things that we have at access or that we've made and it's like, you've made it for one purpose mm -hmm. and then you're kind of like, oh, whatever. But then you realize it. Like I made a headache oil, mm -hmm. and it's actually like a home protection oil now because really? yeah, like just the the energy that it gives me. Like I mean, it still like works for headaches just fine. But there's something about it that I could I've just been drawn to be using it as a home protection oil. So any amulets or charms or anything that is for my home, it's been used on that and it's been working wonderfully. But it's just like I originally only used it to turn it into a solve and make it a headache thing. But now it's both something for my headache, but also something for my home. And I'm using it in all these completely different ways. And it's just, it's really interesting that, you know, you might have this one spell that you've been using exactly the same for multiple times or maybe years. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait, this one person used it in, or like used their moon water for something totally different. Now I'm, I, I have this totally different elixir that's still a water, completely different, but I can use it in those different ways. Like mm -hmm. maybe I'll water my plants with like, I have a plant that is a person that I'm, maybe I'm keeping an eye on and I'm like using like a baneful uh, water on it, you know, that I've blessed banefully in this. I don't know, like something like yeah. that. I actually did an entire, like a section on elixirs in my book. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of tinctures and elixirs use vodka. I mean, if you don't want to use that, you can use vinegar, but that's mm -hmm. a little bit less uh, stringent. Mm -hmm. But the concept was really interesting because I wanted to create a protection elixir, a type of potion that would be very versatile. So I took several of the ingredients, I put them into a jar and I let it sit from full moon to full moon as a basically a four week cycle. And then, um, I strained it on the full moon and put it in a little dropper bottle. And then right before I closed it, I said the little activating words, mm -hmm. which were uh, protective spirits, defensive elixir, sentinel, safeguard, enchanted mixture, close. I love that. It locks that spirit, that directive in. And what's interesting is when I first made this, this liquid, the concept was that it would be so versatile, but that grew into all these fold outs for mm -hmm. this because now all of a sudden I can use this um, to anoint a, a simple thread that I might sew yeah. into someone's clothing. I can anoint a piece of jewelry. I can do it drip a few drops at the corners of my home. I can do a line at my front door. I can do it at my windowsill. I could put a few drops and maybe some, some, a couple of plants that I feel like mm -hmm. a few birds have been trying to eat lately. Yeah. <laughs> or like even if you're kitchen witchery, like on the handles of some of your items, yes. as long as it's, you know, safe to ingest just in case. Right. Um, but exactly. like on the handles of something or like your hairbrush, if you mm -hmm. do a lot of glamour work, like you can use these things in so many different ways. Absolutely. And it's just, it's the intention of putting it in everything that you're doing. Like all of my mugs are special for a specific thing or whatever, you know, like I actually got um, chalk markers and you can draw and write on the bottom oh. of your coffee mugs and then brew the coffee in them. It's literally like you're brewing a fresh potent, caffeine is potency. Caffeine is potency. So literally draw or sigil on the bottom of your coffee mug or even a, uh, um, just a petition, a See, statement. Th then these are the things, coffee. these are the things. Of like, I, I never thought of that, but I'm taking that now, I'm, that's mine now. Like I'm- It's <laughs> yours, it's all of yours. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, or like, I mean, if, you know, if you have like a novena candle or whatever, a, mm -hmm. a seven day candle, and a lot of people write their prayers on there, their Absolutely. intentions, it's like, you could just do that with a white coffee mug or a, maybe a black Absolutely. coffee mug or whatever color. And it's like, just write your intention over it and maybe like bless whatever's in your cup and then drink it. Mm -hmm. Tea magic, coffee magic, drink magic, whatever. Like, there you go. Yeah. So 
yeah, this uh, we, did, we had a craft day, so we just figured we'd sit down and chat about being crafty and being adaptable with your magic and with your craft and just the items that you have. Um, and also making it fun. Like, I don't, I'm sure not everybody likes to junk journal, but I sure do. I do. Yeah, and I'm glad that I have Marshall, who's also a very crafty, cunning witch that I get to bounce ideas off of all the time. And, you know, we're always texting each other and sending each other, like, look at my new page in my journal. Or oh my look gosh. At, look at my new drawing and, yeah, whatever we made. The only person in the world who's seen this entire book is you, because every new page I send it. Look at this page I just did. Yeah, look and I love I it. Did. No, I love it. I, I absolutely adore it, because I always get so much inspiration from you as well. And... Um, it's gotten me back into like putting so much effort into my, my grimoires because I definitely had a spike where I was like, everything's gonna be so cute. And then I like went down and I was like, I'm just gonna write this down so I don't forget it. When it comes down to it, your witchcraft should be fun. You should yeah. be loving it. You should be enjoying it. So if you find that the way in which you're recording your spells, the way in which you are writing down how your craft is evolving mm -hmm. isn't fun, change it. Yeah, well, it should, I mean, it should be, it should be something that comes to you easily, yes. right? And, I, and if all that comes to you easily is typing it in the notes app in your phone, that is okay. Yes. And I mean, I know people like that where yeah. their whole, their whole grimoire, they do not have a physical thing. Everything that goes in here started in the notes app in my phone. It yeah. started there and worked its way up. Mine is in my, my, I call it my neurotic journal. Where the just, bullet journal? <laughs> yeah. It, where, I mean, I don't even think I brought the other one, but it's literally like, it looks like the writings of like a crazy person. There's just, it's just, Scribbles. Yeah, I mean, like, just because I'm like, I need it out of my brain, but I need it somewhere where I can look back on it, and that's where it goes, and it looks, it's, I look mad when I'm like, I'm like, ah! um, but, yeah, and it's, I, I think uh, I've seen people do it in, like, the, you said the notes app, but also, like, Google Docs, or, like, yeah. you know, like, literally anywhere, if you just type it on your phone, and you've got it, and that's, that's the best way to, for you, and you're like, fuck junk journaling, I'm not into that, which, fair you know that's fair. fair that works for your life and your lifestyle that that's the only way that that makes sense and that's what it means to kind of personalize and be creative with your craft yes it doesn't necessarily mean i have to get creative with my craft i have to go out and buy all these things absolutely no. not i only did it because of how much joy i get in doing yeah. this crafting it's part of my craft and it brings me joy mm -hmm. but if what brings you joy it might be literally going out and and I mean, I take walks and I'll sometimes talk to the trees and I'll like oh, yeah. touch them and 100%. I'll like collect bark from them. Mm -hmm. um, I think there are opportunities for us to kind of learn how to be creative in our comfort zone mm -hmm. and then push us yeah, and push one ourselves step one step at a time. Yeah. And like, that's why I love the ink. It was so versatile. You could, you, back to rosemary for a second, mm -hmm. you can make a rosemary ink. Absolutely. I mean, Rosemary is wonderful for protection. It's wonderful for healing magic. Imagine if you took a bunch of macerated rosemary and some vodka and boiled it down for not boiled, double oh, boiled it, it down. So good. It would smell so good. It so good. Too. Add a little gum arabic. Just take a little light sponge brush to some petition papers, mm -hmm. and then I want to put a petition spell to protect my friend so and so. Today is a big day. They're traveling across the country, and I want to make sure they're protected. Spirit of Rosemary, Spirit of the Earth, I ask or I command that you protect my best friend so-and-so. Write that all down there. Burn it. Done. It's it really can be that simple. Yeah. But look at look at the creative process mm -hmm. and the crafting that went into getting to that simplicity. It started with building a relationship with right. the rosemary. Or layer it and put it in a charm bag, or layer it and put it in one of those like little lockets of a piece of jewelry that they yes. can carry with them. Like do you see what I'm saying yes. when it comes from beginner of like layers, layers, and then intermediate layers, layers, and then advanced? Like it's really, there's not, I mean, unless you're being initiated into something and you know, that's a completely different story, but it's like, it's really not like this is a beginner spell and this is an advanced spell. Like it, it, it's not like that. Right. Um, for the most part, like the only thing that makes it advanced is either it's either I'm gonna put this in a weird way. It's the more <laughs> words or more experience of layering. Yes. Both of, and understanding. And understanding. Mm -hmm. So like, here's a really adaptable one. I think I told you about this one too. Okay. A rotisserie chicken. I've said this before. Oh yeah, yeah. Go to the <laughs> yeah. grocery store, get a rotisserie chicken. Debone the meat, the wing bones, travel talismans. Mm -hmm. Put them in a charm bag with some dandelion for luck, some, uh, some wing bones, tie it all up. 
carry it with. There's there's just so many ways that you can do one spell. So Absolutely. be creative, be adaptable, use the things around you. And above all else, be cunning. Be cunning. I hope that you enjoyed this mini vlog and this crafty chat with the Witch of Southern Light. But as always, when my trips come to an end, the sun went away and the rain rolled in as a sad farewell to Texas and Marshall. But do check out his pages that I've linked down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Best of luck, be kind to each other, and may your gods treat you as you've treated others. Bye. <laughs> oh, fine, fine. Okay. Oh, stretch. All right. Anyway, is it still in the right place?